Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am the OmniViewer, and this is a list video. You love lists, right? I assume you must, that's what comprises most content on the internet, so here's one of my own. The year 2016 is seeing a lot of new additions to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Spider-Man and Black Panther will soon be premiering in Captain America Civil War. Elektra, The Punisher, and The Hand have all been part of Daredevil's second season. The Inhumans continue to dominate Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Doctor Strange will soon be getting his own solo movie. And most of you stopped listening after I said Spider-Man, didn't you? Yeah, Spidey seems to be the one everybody cares about. Unless you think I'm about to go into full contrarian mode and say that I don't care, trust me, I'm right there with you. I too am really happy to see that Spider-Man is finally back at Marvel Studios and can now be part of the Avengers. But if I'm being perfectly honest, I'm more excited about all the other, more obscure characters. When you really look at it, the Marvel Cinematic Universe has been built on characters that were once either considered obscure or were downright hated. There was a time not too long ago when Iron Man existed purely to fill up the roster of the Avengers. There was a time when people were actually angry that Rocket Raccoon was a playable character in Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. And there was a time when Ant-Man was the most hated comic book character ever. And just look at where we are now. So yeah, I'm all for Spider-Man, but... I kind of want to see what Marvel can do with these new, more obscure characters that people maybe aren't so familiar with. And in fact, I have quite a few that haven't been officially announced yet, but who I'd really like to see enter the movies. Now, the only guidelines I have for this list are that first of all, I'm not counting characters who are already at other studios, which is my way of saying this will not be yet another rant about how the Fantastic Four should be gotten as far away from Fox as possible. Although, to be clear, I do think that should happen. The second guideline is no distaff counterparts or characters who are clearly meant to be different versions of pre-existing characters. So for as much as I would like to see She-Hulk and Beta Ray Bill make their debut on the big screen, they're not going to be on the list. I guess consider them honorable mentions, because I do want to see them, but all the same, they won't be there. With that in mind, here, in no particular order, are the five characters slash teams I want to see enter the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Number one, The Man-Thing. For the uninitiated, The Man-Thing is Ted Salas, a chemist who was one of many people trying to recreate that infamous super soldier formula, whose girlfriend Ellen turned out to be a traitor. During his treacherous chase through the swamp, he destroyed all of his notes, injected the one vial of the formula into his bloodstream in hopes of saving it, and then crashed into a swamp. The elements of the swamp mixed with the formula to transform him into a monster, now completely inhuman in body and mind. I reviewed an absolutely terrible made-for-TV movie supposedly based on Man-Thing. It really was one of the worst movies I have ever seen. But I want to make it clear, it in no way represents the original comics, which are amazing! The movie turned Man-Thing into a generic kill-everything-in-sight monster, and then just sort of pushed him into the background so they could focus on a by-the-numbers murder mystery with bland characters and really poorly handled environmentalist themes. But the comics are this weird fusion of southern gothic horror with high fantasy full of demons and cults and monsters and parallel realities, and in the middle of it all is Man-Thing, this creature who was once human, but whose body and mind have been transformed into something completely inhuman. And it's so cool! Frankly, reading the original comics has made me even more ticked off at the movie, and I'm probably going to have to do a little revisiting at some point with that in mind. The fact is, though, that not only is Man-Thing arguably Marvel's best monster character, he's also one of the most important characters in the whole Marvel Universe, because he guards the nexus of all realities, that place where every parallel dimension and alternate history converges, which for some reason is in a swamp in the Bible Belt. Yes, parallel dimensions, a concept it looks like they'll be introducing in Doctor Strange. What better opportunity do you need to introduce Man-Thing? 
Now, Man-Thing did already get a name drop in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., so we know he's out there somewhere. It's just time we brought him onto the big screen. Number two, Spider-Woman. Now, I know you heard that and just said, hey, he said no distaff counterparts. And you're right, I did. But if you ask me, Spider-Woman is different enough from Spider-Man that she can count as something completely different. Spider-Woman is one of those characters that Marvel doesn't necessarily know what to do with, and so she's gone through quite a few different origins over the years. The most recent one, and therefore the one they would probably go with, is that she was injected with the elements needed to give her superpowers before she was born, and she was originally trained as an assassin for Hydra before switching sides. The only powers she has in common with Spider-Man are strength and agility. She can shoot lasers from her hands, fly, and interestingly emits pheromones that allow her a power sort of similar to mind control. Not quite mind control, but close, which would be very interesting to see. Of all the characters on this list, I think Spider-Woman has the best shot of actually showing up. And I even think she could headline her own movie. So why not? There's clearly a demand for more of a female presence in these movies, and unlike Spider-Man, Marvel never had to negotiate with Sony to get the rights to her. Why not put her somewhere? Number three, Devil Dinosaur. I like dinosaurs. He had to be on this list. Much like Spider-Woman, Devil's status in the Marvel Universe has kind of been in flux over the years. He was originally from prehistoric Earth, but then he was switched to being from an alternate reality called Dinosaur World, and maybe he could just be from the Savage Lands because that's on the regular planet anyway. It's complicated. I could devote an entire video to that alone. And I will one day. Still, I think a movie focusing on Devil Dinosaur would give Marvel a chance to really experiment especially depending on how they decided to portray him. If they went with the original idea, they could do a high fantasy film that would be like Conan the Barbarian meets One Million Years B.C. That could be pretty cool. Or they could go full-blown Godzilla and have him be a monster in the modern day. Fun fact, Godzilla actually did show up in the Marvel Universe in a completely canon story, but they'll never be able to adapt that because Godzilla is currently at Warner Brothers with the DC Universe characters. Oh my gosh, Godzilla vs. the Justice League could actually happen! That pipe dream aside, though, Devil is the next best choice. He's a T-Rex with human-level intelligence. I mean, there's quite a bit you can do with that. As for his companion, Moon Boy, well... If they went with the original prehistoric-slash-dinosaur-world setting, I would say include him. But if they're gonna go the Godzilla route, probably best not to include him. Oh, and as a side note, his opponent should be Fin Fang Foom. May as well be, he's clearly never gonna fight Iron Man. Number four, Angela. There may be a few of you who are confused to see Angela on this list, considering she originated in the Spawn comics from Image. Well, she's at Marvel now, and the story of how she got there is way too long and complicated to get into here. Let's just say this was Neil Gaiman's way of making sure his bridge with Todd McFarlane was as thoroughly burned as possible, and the ashes were scattered to the wind. Currently, Angela is being portrayed as half-angel, half-as-guardian. And I don't necessarily know if she could carry her own film, but I could easily see her appearing alongside Thor or maybe Guardians of the Galaxy both of which she's done in the comics so far. Really, the primary reason I want to see her in the movies is just so she finally has something to do. Her only appearances outside the comics thus far have been a literal blink-and-you'll-miss-it cameo in the movie, and a completely pointless subplot of the animated series, both of which Todd McFarlane probably regrets doing. Again, look it up. And in neither of those examples did she appear in costume or get an action scene. Say what you will about Batman v Superman, at least Wonder Woman did something at the finale. So why not? Marvel has Angela, may as well do something with her. Why not put her in the movies? Number 5. The Twelve and the Mystery Men. Boy, am I cheating with this one. These are not only two separate teams, but there are 17 characters between them. 
but it's my list, so shut up. These two concepts are just similar enough that I figured I should group them together, but very different in execution. And I intend to review both of them eventually, so I won't get into too much detail here, but the basic premises for each one are as follows. The Twelve are a collection of Golden Age heroes from so far back in Marvel's catalog that when their first issues were printed, Marvel was still called Timely Comics. Originally, a lot of them fell into the categories of either Superman Clone or the Shadow Clone. But, actually, quite a few of them are really, really interesting and could possibly carry their own series, both in the cinematic universe and in the regular comics universe. Hint, hint. The Mystery Men, meanwhile, are five characters who are newer creations, but meant to be set in that 1930s pulp era. They are deliberate homages to the heroes of that time. And if you ask me, both groups are really cool characters who deserve a shot at the spotlight. But then again, I'm a sucker for those old pulp-style heroes. Oh, and by the way, the Twelve, canonically, is set in the immediate aftermath of Civil War. I'm just throwing that out there. Well, that's my two cents. Now I'm curious to hear what you guys think. Are there any particular characters you want to see? Do you agree or disagree with anything on my list? Leave a comment, make your own video, whatever you feel is necessary. I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Until such time as we meet again, this is the Omni Viewer, signing off.